This is the second of three short videos reviewing the basics of solving. In this video, we'll focus on solving linear inequalities. Solving linear inequalities implies you have one of the four inequality symbols. To review those symbols, we have a less than symbol, a less than or equal to symbol, we've got a greater than symbol, and a greater than or equal to symbol. So those are probably somewhat familiar. In case it's a little hard to remember which one's less than, which one's greater than, one thing that might help is if you think of the less than symbol kind of stretched out, it looks like an L for less than, uh, that might stick for you. But it turns out that solving linear inequalities is actually very similar to solving linear equations, which we looked at in our first video on this topic. So those ideas of solving carry over. Two, two small differences. Uh, one is that when solving a linear inequality, the solution is an interval of values rather than a single value. So if you think back to solving an equation, we would get things like x equals 5. So that's one value of the variable that's, that makes the equation true. With an inequality, a potential solution could be something like x is greater than 5, but notice by saying that x is greater than 5, there are many values that fit this description. For example, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Also, when solving an inequality, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, the direction of the inequality will flip. And we'll see that in one of our examples here shortly. So, a lot of these ideas we already have from solving linear equations and we'll make sure these two small differences are clear through some examples. Let's start with 5x minus 7 is less than 23. So again, if it helps, think of the less than symbol as an equal to symbol for a moment, and we're trying to get x alone. So a good starting point looks like adding 7 to both sides of our inequality as we're trying to get x alone here. So that means we now just have 5x on the left-hand side of our inequality. And on the right-hand side, 23 plus 7 gives us 30. And we're getting closer to get, getting x alone. 5x is less than 30 means that 5 is being multiplied by x. So we'll undo multiplication by division. And we'll do it to both sides. So now we have x all by itself on the left hand side and 30 divided by 5 gives us 6. So the solution to this inequality is x is less than 6. Often you'll be asked to graph your solution on a number line so let's go ahead and do that together as well. If I have a number line and I put 6 here I'll just put it kind of in the middle. I have to ask myself am I shading values to the left of 6 or to the right of 6? And here because we're trying to find values less than 6 that implies we shade to the left. Again, remember things like 0 are down here. Uh, and since it's less than 6, I'm going to use a parentheses at 6, indicating it doesn't actually touch that value, but it will get awful close. And I'll just shade that. Sometimes you'll see an open dot used here too. And to take it one step further, since we did our number line, Every now and then you'll be asked to provide interval notation for your solution. So in our case, basically the values that satisfy x being less than 6 would be the smallest number you can imagine, we'll call that negative infinity, all the way up till 6, but don't touch 6. So I'll go ahead and use that parentheses there again. So kind of three little ideas we have here. Our, our solution as an inequality, our solution on the number line, and then interval notation. Let's try one more where we do these same three um, ideas of solving. So 10 minus 4x is now greater than or equal to negative 2. So our goal is the same. We're trying to isolate x. A starting point here might be to subtract 10 from both sides. So we're trying to get x by itself. I'll go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides. That leaves a negative 4x on the left-hand side of our inequality. And on the right-hand side, when we do negative 2 minus 10, that's looking like negative 12. So our inequality at this point says negative 4x is greater than or equal to negative 12. 
So we know we need to divide both sides by negative 4. But a moment ago we said if we multiply or divide by a negative number, that is what causes the direction of our inequality to switch. So my greater than or equal to symbol is now a less than or equal to symbol, less than or equal to symbol. And negative 12 divided by negative 4 is 3. So our solution here is x is less than or equal to 3. Let's go ahead and graph this one on the number line as well. So if I put 3, I'll just go ahead and put 3 kind of in the center here. If I want values less than or equal to 3, I'm still going to be shading to the left of 3, but I'm actually allowed to touch 3, and so we often use a bracket to indicate that we're touching 3. You can also use a closed hole. So everything to the left of 3 and 3 itself would be included in that solution. So just to be thorough, let's write our interval notation here as well. And this would say, again, go from the smallest number you can imagine, so all the way out here we call that negative infinity, and go all the way up till 3, and you can include 3. So notice in this example I use a bracket at 3. If I pop back to our last example briefly, we saw a parenthesis at 6 because it didn't actually touch 6. Here it includes 3, so we use a bracket, and then that would be it. So hopefully these ideas make a little bit of sense. Um, hopefully you feel how similar solving inequalities are to solving equations. And if you feel comfortable, please try out the practice. And if you'd like to see a word problem, look at the last video in this series.